Hello, welcome back to the Offgo family. Today we're back working on the K40 laser, upgrading all the bits we can. Before I say anything, would you mind please pressing subscribe? Um, I'm trying to hit 10,000 subscribers before Christmas. It seems quite nutty, but I would really appreciate it and I'd love to have you as part of the family. Anyway, last episode we got a few bits done with the uh, 12 volt power and various other things. Now I want to start hooking in all the bits and bobs so that they actually work when it's turned on. We also need to get the LED lights working, so we got a few bits and bobs. Let's get on. First things first, let's get the potentiometer wired in, so then we can get the voltmeter wired in too, because they both sort of coexist. Right, as I've said a few times, please make sure that if you're following this step by step exactly, then you need to check that we've got the same power supplies. Um, otherwise, you'll have to do your own research on which wires go where and at this point I'm going to be the first time really I'm going to be talking about specifically the colors that come into this potentiometer to make it easier when we swap them over I won't be saying which one's a sweeper arm or anything because it just makes my life easier if I just take one put it up take one put it up and show you the colors to which one on the actual um, 100 turn potentiometer. Right, as with everything, including the pictures that are on my Patreon site, if you want to have a look at them, um, the pictures on how this is all wired up. By the way, they are free, but I've put them there just for ease of use. You don't have to be a Patreon. Just go over to my Patreon page, link in the description, and you'll be able to see all of the wiring diagrams. Well, they're not even diagrams, they're pictures. But anyway, I'm trying to make it so you can see specifically which ones I take from where. So if your colouring isn't the same, you can still do it if you've got the same stuff. So, first one, is the green one and that goes up the front of the 100 turn potentiometer um, will that stay on there yeah I might have to use some crimping tools to get that to stay on then we want the black wire which is number two yeah definitely gonna have to crimp these on or maybe solder them green black and then white but this one's fallen apart again which I'm going to solder them all I've decided but in a minute okay so in order they go green black oh, these are just falling off too quickly green black and white and that will now allow your 100 turn pot to be the potentiometer for the entire setup. So we can get rid of all this now. Now, if you're wanting to hook up a, um, volt, a voltage meter like I am, you'll need to wire these up to the potentiometer too. What you want is you want the red one to the white, which is the back leg of the potentiometer. Um, and the black one to the black one. Will that just come off? Yep, of course it will. <clears throat> Obviously, so will the green. Right. Now, 90% of the time I forget um, heat shrink tubing, but I'm doing it for you guys so it looks like I'm a totes profesh, as the young uns would say. Right, and the green one. I'm going to start by tinning everything and then I'm going to solder it all together. Now I'm going to tin the potentiometer too, hopefully. And the two wires. Can't see a blinking thing. So it's green at the front. Let's just make sure I've got everything untangled because these would be the one things I can't um, I can't untangle later. Everything else I've made to unclip. So green first. Oh, let's let's cut it and make it look nice, shall we? All 
uh, green, black, and then red. Right, if that's all wired in correctly, this should work. And it doesn't. Okay, so theoretically that should work. And it does, beautiful. Okay, now to get the ammeter side of things working. Right, the ammeter is quite straightforward. All you need to do is hook up the wires from the ammeter to the actual um, analog ammeter here. That's why I haven't tightened it up too tight because I knew I'd have to. But what I'm going to do first is I'm actually going to um, make some little circles out of this wire to just slip over here and I'll show you what I mean now. Right, I've just noticed that the ammeter was wired up backwards, meaning that the power supply was going into the sensor area and the vice versa. Um, for the first time ever, I think, that it w wasn't my fault. That's how it was actually on the wiring diagrams that came with it. Well, I say came with it, that were on the website with it. So um, I've swapped the wires around now, and basically this one, which was the sensor wire, is now the power wire and vice versa. So let me show you. This is the sensor wire. Obviously the thicker one is the sensor wire for some strange reason. Another reason why I didn't realize. Anyway, and all I've done is I've soldered a few loops on it so that I can actually use them around this and then I can actually um, screw it on that way. Um, and then this is the new power cable. Right, I'll get this all wired in and I'll be back. Right, first test. Now this one won't go up when I do this, but it will go up when I press this, or it should, okay. So it might mean I've got it around the wrong way, one second, alright second attempt. There we go. Okay, so here we've got the um, sensor wires, the positive going to the black side and the negative, did I say positive? Yeah, um, the negative going to the yellow side. They need to be tightened up, but that's, that's all working fine now. Right, before I forget, I'm just gonna solder in the temperature sensor. I'm going to tin the ends and then do that. Right, let's check it again. Right, let's just check we got it in the right way. I'm going to touch the um, the temperature sensor. Perfect. Okay, as I mentioned in the last episode, and possibly even the first one, uh, this doesn't, um, the grub screw in this does not go right through and stop this falling off. So, I've set it up like this and I'm going to just put a dab of hot glue there and hope that that's enough to stick it on. Now, if you turn this all the way to that way, put your little, uh, the little notch there, which will coincide with the notch at the bottom of this, and make sure that this is on the zero, it means that it'll always be in the right place. 
or theoretically should be. So, right, oh, let's see. This is a make or break one, you know. I hope I don't break it. Too big, I won't be able to get it in. Right, um gonna have to rethink that then. But at least we didn't break it. Oh did I just manage to squeeze it on there by pure fluke? Let's have a look, shall we? Right, that isn't actually stuck completely there, but there was a tiny bit of hot glue in the um, in the entryway, let's say, and um, it's enough to hold it on there, so I'm fine with that. That's fine. Job's done. Happy days. Right, next job is the LEDs. So I'm going to tack them on with a bit of uh, masking tape to see how much I need, and then I'm going to start wiring them in. Right, I've just gaffer taped LEDs around here, just so I could see sort of you know where they could go and luckily enough there's a nice gap here for them to stick through and I'm going to wire them up from here up to the switch so that's my next job take it out and solder it in I think I'm probably going to hot glue these things right they stick okay for a while but they will not stick okay if they're getting moved around so if I'm opening the lid or whatever so I'm going to hot glue around that area quite significantly to hold it in. I was going to use one of these, but I'm not sure. I think that'll still end up starting to pull it along. Um, so yeah, I think I'm hot gluing. I'm not 100% sure yet. Right, I have soldered in a piece of wire to the LED strip, and I'm going to attempt to stick it around in a very neat manner that won't need any hiding at all. Yeah, it's not going to happen, we all know that, but um, then I'm going to come back. I won't do that on camera. Then I'm going to come back and show you what you know what to do next. Well I've stuck the LEDs round and now I want to just connect it up to a 12 volt battery and see if that's going to be enough. If not I might need to put some LEDs down this side, I'm not sure yet. Do you know what, I think that's going to be enough. Let's have a look, ski. Obviously this, um, the piece of um, protective film will be off of here. So yeah I think that's going to be enough. Um, or I could do another row around here. Hmm. Right, I did decide to solder another set that go all the way around here, hang on, round and under there, all the way around. And I did that with that um, cheap uh, Amazon soldering iron, which I will leave a link to in the description. I get no money for this advertisement, but one second. Genuinely, I don't normally do this, but this soldering iron is one that I was asked to review by a company, right? And... <sighs> I don't, I don't normally do it, I normally buy my own stuff and then review it, but I thought, do you know what? I will this time, I need a new soldering iron, let's see what it's like. And I've got to say, I genuinely like it. It comes in a whole set and it's really, really cheap. I'll put a link in the description. If you don't have a soldering iron, now I don't, don't expect to be soldering huge amounts of things to metal and so on, but it worked to solder the LEDs to the actual um, aluminium of the laser, which I was quite surprised by. But don't expect it to do really, really heavy duty stuff. But this works really well as a sort of day-to-day -day soldering iron. So I really would advise it. So if you if you need a soldering iron, I'll put a link in the description. You can check it out. Right, I'm going to test it again. I've turned off all exterior lights apart from the overhead one. And yeah, it seems all right. That seems a bit better actually. Yeah, it looks it it seems a bit more um, uniform. But yeah, I prefer that. Right now to wire it all in. Right, first things first, we want to take the positive side of the LEDs and we're going to crimp on one of our connectors to connect it to the switch. I bought these connectors 10 years ago maybe and didn't bother using them for that project and I've used so many for this project that I'm glad I had quite a few, let's put it that way. Right, so that needs to go in here, like so. And then we're going to take the negative, we're going to plonk it in with the negative of the LEDs. Now I am partially tempted to cut all this back and make it so it fits perfectly. 
Um, but I won't do that on camera at all. I will do that if I decide to at a later date. But for now, I need to unscrew the negative side. That was tough. Okay, now we get to test. And LEDs on. And it's all working beautifully. Okay, so that's the lights done. Next then we need to do a fan assisted air assist. Now this is just gonna be a little 12 volt fan and I'm gonna test it, see if it works. Um, I will be putting a uh, fish tank pump kind of fan in as well see if that works I've got no idea but um, that will be another project but let's do the fan assist now right this is a normal run-of-the-mill 12 volt fan like computer fan etc and I've 3d printed a few parts out for it um, this was 3d printed from Thingiverse and I looked at the guys um, sort of a page of all the things he's put on there and he owns a um, K40 laser as well and um, I had a look at some of his videos of he's doing the same sort of things I'm doing upgrading and so on and I looked at some of the stuff he's done and he's a lot more articulate than I am so I'd um, pop across to have a look at his um, channel because he's only got a few hundred subscribers and what he's doing is really really good so I really do um, suggest that you guys go over there and just have a look at his channel and subscribe to him you know he's doing really good content and the more subscribers he has the more you know the more he'll want to you know show off more bits and bobs and bits that I've done that you don't understand maybe he's done better um, I haven't watched all of his videos I've watched two of them and I found found what he was doing very articulate and very you know straight to the point whereas I go left at the roundabout normally before I get to what I'm trying to say right this is the first thing I'm going to be testing um, for the air um, the air assist um, and this is just a simple nozzle assisted doohicker um, I'm not going to be um, putting this in as a permanent thing so I'm literally not I'm not even gonna have a um, wire belt to hold it in or anything I have actually 3d printed lots of um, chain belts um, hang on. Uh, which I will be putting in at some point for various other bits but I'd like to test with this first and see how well this does and if it does okay then I might add stuff to it if it does really well I might not need to and if it does really poorly I can just take it out right the first thing I want to do is hot glue this like this um, this file obviously and anything else I've 3D printed or whatever will be in the description along with um, the link to the guy's channel. Now I'm not going to put too much on because if it doesn't work I can use this for something else. Um, yeah I'll just put it around this side and then that'll be enough. As I say it's literally just to see if it works, if it does brilliant, if it doesn't then I've got a fan to use for something else. It's had a little bit of time to dry, it's probably not as as cured and set as it should be, but I don't care. Right, first things first then, we need to unscrew this. Well, that's pretty cool. He has designed it so it won't hit the side. That's pretty cool. Right, okay. As I say, I'm not going to be um, wiring any of this in. As in, I'm just gonna plonk it through and see if it works. It's gonna, I'm gonna just have it loose. It may end up getting burnt by the laser, but who cares? It's purely for testing, see if it's any better with that or without. Right, this gets wired up exactly the same as the LED did. What I've done is I've put the wire through the side where the LEDs came through. Um, that's the LED one, right. We need to crimp the positive side to 
the switch. And then the negative goes down to the air assist negative. Now obviously this could go in any negative that's part of the 12 volt side but I've put all mine so that I know exactly which bit's what but if you just had them all going into the same connection block that's fine. As I said I just want to make this so that I can always upgrade it and it's easy to just oh so it's easy to just upgrade a certain one thing or lots of things or whatever. Okay, that could have been tied in a bit neater, but such is life, I'll have to cut that back a little bit. Right, let's test. Okay, that's working. Whether it does any good at assisting the smoke out the way, I'm not sure, but we will test that at a later date. But that's it for this video. Okay, that's where I'm going to leave it. Um, I've still got loads more upgrading to do, but I'm not sure when I'll get around to doing that. But make sure you do subscribe to see any other future content. Anyway, thanks for watching. I'll see you again soon. Bye for now.